esteemed participants, faculty members, and friends who have gathered here today for the grand inauguration of the 19th Law Asia International Mood Competition, India National Rounds, organized by Ramaya College of Law in association with Law Asia. Ramaya College of Law was established in 1995 by the visionary founder, Dr. M. S. Ramaya, with a mission of providing quality legal education. Over the years, the college has grown in stature and reputation to become one of the premier law colleges in India. Recently, we celebrated the Silver Jubilee of the college, marking 25 years of excellence in legal education. Our aim is to create a generation of legal professionals who can take on global challenges and ensure justice for all. Witnessing the success of hosting the 18th Law Asia International Mode Competition in 2023, Ramaya College of Law is providing a global platform to Indian students by organizing the first ever edition of the Indian National Rounds of the 19th Law Asia International Mode Competition. This year, we welcome you to participate in the National Rounds of Law Asia International Mode Competition held from 21st June to 23rd June 2024 at Ramaya College of Law. The top two teams from the Indian National Rounds will represent India in the International Rounds together with the host institution, Ramya College of Law. To commence this event, I would now like to invite our distinguished dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp signifying the inauguration of this prestigious competition. Good evening to all of you. Uh, Honorable Justice K.S. Mudgal, Judge, High Court of Karnataka and Executive Chairman Arbitration Center. Our Principal, Mr. Uma Mahesh, the Coordinator, Manohar Bhatt, all the members of the faculty of Ramaya College of Law, all the participating students, and the other dear students who are present here today. Today is a very special day. It's a matter of great satisfaction for us also that uh, 19th La Asia International Mode Competition is being inaugurated today on this special day. Because today is the International Yoga Day, as you all of you know, and many of you might have also participated in the morning. And uh, as we now know, yoga is also skill in action. It's told in Bhagavad Gita, is, yoga is karma sukha ushalam. So it is skill. What we are doing today, this event is also all about skill, which is so very essential for, in general, for everybody, every student, and especially for practitioners of law like you. So. We are all very happy that uh, Ramaya College of Law is hosting this very important event today. I would not like to take much time, it's already delayed. Uh, we are very fortunate that this being this uh, special event is being inaugurated, has already been inaugurated by Honorable Justice K.S. Mudgal, Judge High Court of Karnataka and Executive Chairman Arbitration Center. And uh, she has taken the time out of a very busy schedule. Today is a working day. And apart from that, I am sure there are some events also connected with uh, uh, this thing, International Yoga Day. So, and you know, Bangalore traffic also, how difficult it is to come in the, this particular time. So I thank you very heartily and I extend a very warm welcome to you, 
and I request our principal to offer it. Today, this event, uh, Mr. Raphael Tay, he is the chairman, Moot Committee, Law Asia. He has joined online. Uh, I am very happy to extend a very warm welcome to him. <laughs> this event would not have been possible without the participating teams. There are about 12 teams from different parts of the country, uh, all premier institutions. Uh, it is my duty to extend warm welcome to all the participating students from different parts of the country. Thank you also for having made this, having participated in this very important event. I extend a warm welcome to all the students who are participating. and our members of the faculty, our principal, and the coordinator, and all the students have been working very hard, events very successful. Uh, so this event is also, I'm sure, is going to be a very successful event. Uh, next two days, I'm sure, there is going to be a very interesting competition. It will, be, it will take place in a true spirit of you know, competitiveness. And uh, so I thank our members of the faculty, principal, coordinator, and all the students for engaging themselves very actively in making this event a success. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Let me take this opportunity to introduce our distinguished guest of honor who will be joining us online, Mr. Rafael Tay. Mr. Rafael Tay is the head of corporate, commercial, and m and practice at Law Partnership, a relationship firm of the global firm Evershed Sutherland. Having been in practice for 37 years, encompassing both cross-border and domestic work, he has extensive experience in various areas, notably corporate and commercial laws, mergers and acquisitions, information technology law. Mr. Raphael also has academic roles in institutions such as the College of Law Australia and the Faculty of Law, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. <coughs> He is a council member of the Inter-Pacific Inter Bar Association and a member of Law Asia. He has been a chair of the Mood Standing Committee of Law Asia since 2008 and has organized the inaugural Asian Mood competition which was held in Kuala Lumpur in 2023. Mr. Rafael Tay has also been recognized as one of the top 15 MA lawyers in Asia by ALB Asia 2022. We are honored to have Mr. Rafael Tay join us online. I now invite him to address the gathering. The Honorable Justice K.S. Mundana, Judge of the High Court of Karnataka State, Mr. S.S. Nagan, Senior Counsel, High Court of Karnataka, Mr. B.S. Ram Prasad, Chief Executive of Gokula Education Foundation, Mr. G. Ramakrishna, Chandra Krish, uh, Chief Finance Officer of the Gokula Education Foundation, Professor S. Uma Mahesh Satayan Narayan, Principal Ramaya College of Law, Mr. Manoha Bhatt, Faculty Coordinator, Moon Court Committee, Ramaya College of Law, faculty members, participating teams and students, student volunteers, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this inaugural Indian National Rounds of the Law Asia International World Competition, which is held at Ramaya College of Law this evening and throughout the next few days. I bid you a warm welcome from my own very own home in Kuala Lumpur. I apologize that I am not able to join you in person in Bangalore, which is something which I would have very much loved to have done so. Last November, Law Asia held its international competition at Ramaya College, where we had a wonderful time. And as host Ramaya College, 
had ex exceeded all expectations. And it's something that we will always treasure in our hearts and the memories that we have brought back home to wherever we might have been. It gives me great pleasure, therefore, to, to say a few words this evening uh, for this inaugural Indian National Rounds of the Law Asia International Competition. Whilst it is the inaugural Indian National Rounds, I hope to see many more Indian Rounds from hence forth. The top two teams during this competition will represent India together the host um, team, Ramaya College of Law, uh, to Kuala Lumpur in October of this year. I'm delighted to see that there are so many teams at the Indian National Rounds this year, and I hope and I welcome you from various parts of India, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And it's really a delight to have you join us here at Bangalore. You know, as I watched the proceedings a moment ago, and I saw so, so many familiar faces, my heart was warmed to see that these were not just familiar faces that I had come to know and know very well as faculty members, as teachers of the law, as members of the faculty, as students. I see many student volunteers that had volunteered at the International Rounds last November, volunteered for this Indian National Rounds as well. So I just want to say kudos to you, because really it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes a commitment and a passion to do what you do. So congratulations once again. To say a few words, I am, I am um, I want to quote an ancient Asian proverb that says, As distance tests a horse's strength, time reveals a person's character. In other words, long periods of testing is required to understand a person's capabilities, nature, as well as character. Mental and moral strength to venture, to persevere, and withstand danger, fear, and difficulty is something that we all require daily. We, we tend to think of the courageous people in our lives, in history, in our nation, in, in, in the world, as people with supernatural powers, people that have done great exploits, people that are, have done things that you and I would never have been able to do. But if the truth be told, in reality, it is we all have the means and the capacity to be courageous in our very own way, each and every single day. The story philosopher Seneca wrote that sometimes even to live is, a, is an act of courage by facing and conquering our fears, we develop the confidence and resilience needed to take on future endeavors and situations. Therefore, the very fact that you are here in Bangalore over this weekend is an act of courage. Because for many of us, public speaking, mooting is not, ne not necessarily natural to us. But for many of us who have overcome the challenges, the difficulties, the late nights, the long hours of research, to just get ourselves to Bangalore this weekend. So to you, I salute you all. For you have done, indeed, a very courageous thing, an act of courage, which deserves honour, which deserves mention. I then turn to the competition itself. In the days to come, you will compete to the name. You will be very competitive, even combative in your stance, in your attitudes towards one another. But just remember one thing. What sets us aside as lawyers, as students of the law, as members of humanity, is our very own humanity. Let us not forget 
that despite competition, who we are. We are, after all, members of humanity. We are, after all, brothers and sisters in this big, wide world. So I hope that in the days to come, as the dust settles, and dust as the night draws to a close, we will all forget what we did during the day, but reconcile as members of the legal profession and reconcile as members of humanity. For it is in each of us that we find refuge and strength in the days to come. So do the right thing for the right reasons and with the right attitude. Lastly, uh, I just want to say that truly I wish I was there with you all this evening. But my work uh, doesn't permit me. In fact, I, I was virtually at Fiji this morning. I had to teach a class of lawyers for the Law Society of Fiji this morning. And this evening I am virtually in Bangalore. Uh, so really, I am in two different parts of the world in one day. Without technology, this would not have been possible. So I beg and seek your forgiveness for not being with you here together with you over the next few days. But just know that my spirit is with you and I wish you all the very best. And I hope to see all of you in Palermo in October later this year. Thank you very much. Born on December 22nd, 1963, Justice Murgul obtained her BCom and LLB from Karnataka University, Dharwa. She joined the legal profession on July 6, 1988 as an advocate at Dharwa and Bangalore. She was appointed as district judge on June 17, 1998. Justice Mudgal sworn in as the additional judge of the Karnataka High Court on November 14, 2016 and became a permanent judge on November 3, 2018. She has chaired several committees including the Juvenile Justice Committee and the Family Courts Committee and currently serves as the president of the Karnataka Arbitration Center. We are privileged to have Honorable Justice K.S. Mukdal with us today. I now invite her to address the gathering. Mr. Rafael Tai, Advocate and Solicitor. I got up Malaya. Shri Ram, yes, Ram, Prasasi, Evo. Uma Mesh, the King's Court. Mr. Manohar Bhatt. My respected teachers who are present here and dear students. First of all, I seek apologies for being late to the program. But uh, as you all know, this is a working day, full working day, and uh, you have this event and we had another event in our High Court. I had to arbitrate between these two events. Ultimately, I reached here. I am overwhelmed to be present here today for the inauguration of this 19th Law Asia International Moot Court Competition. Engagement in Moot Court Competitions and simulated arbitration sessions is a perfect avenue for student participants to hone not just your skills in argument but also control, have control over your, your temperament. Just now the first speaker said that we have to remember that we are all human beings and we should be connected to each other. These events help you students to understand procedural intricacies and develop advocacy skills essential for effective arbitration practice. The feedback from experienced arbitrators and practitioners during these competitions is invaluable for improving students' competencies and understanding of the arbitration process, thereby producing experienced and refined arbitrators. As you all know, Alternative Dispute Resolution, which we call it as ADR, refers the method of resolving disputes without formal litigation. It is a technique
think to resolve disagreements between the parties by arriving at an amicable settlement through negotiation, conciliation or informal adjudication. There are various alternative dispute resolution mechanisms such as mediation, conciliation, lok adalat and more importantly, arbitration. The biggest reason for litigants to be encouraged to pursue IDR as an option is due to its assurance of not being a zero-sum game. Every stakeholder in most ADR process has the ability to shape the narrative of resolution and the resulting conclusion is far more likely to be unanimously favorable than a litigation ever could. As we have gathered here today for the international arbitration moot, it is essential to understand the objective and history of this system. The wisdom of alternative dispute resolution is timeless. There is a verse in Rig Veda which says Sangat Chadvam Samvadam means let us sit together, discuss together, share with each other together so that information is assimilated and disseminated for the benefit of all humanity. Only when people come together there will be exchange of thoughts and ideas. Whenever there is proper communication, there will be fewer disputes. As per Hindu law, one of the earliest known treatises that mentions about arbitration is Brahadaranyaka Upanishad. Arbitration was prevalent in India right from Vedic era. Rishi Agnavalka has referred to some arbitration bodies like Shreni, which is a business community arbitration, Puga, local courts, and Kula, that is wise men of a community. And they were known as Panchayat. Many disputes were referred to a small group of wise men of a community known as Panchayat, wherein the senior most is named as Sarpanch and the members were, are known as Panchas. The decision taken by them are binding on the parties. So, earlier the disputes were solved through Panchayat Raj system, which was deeply adored and endorsed by the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. The disputes which were referred to Panchayats were well recognized and awards passed by them had great significance. The Privy Council also, in case of Vitla Sitanna versus Marivada Viranna, reported in AI 1934, Privy Council 105, recognized them, these Panchayat Awards. They can be regarded as one of the earliest forms of arbitration in India. Therefore, in my opinion, attempts at creating proto-ADR mechanism including arbitration is something Indians can take pride in as, our, as part of our legal culture. Today, the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 governs the system of arbitration in India. It strives for the equitable and efficient determination of disputes and gives litigants the scope for privacy, control and favorability of in the outcomes. It is regulated by Act 1996 as I said. The main characteristics of this Act are it functions as a natural alternative to the traditional adjudicatory courts. It is a privately funded way of conflict resolution. The parties are in charge of this mode of dispute resolution like choosing their own judge and seat of arbitration. And it is binding on the parties except for the very limited grounds of challenge. Perhaps the most appealing characteristic of arbitration is that parties have the control, complete control over the process resulting in higher satisfaction with the final verdict than with the results of litigation. It allows more flexibility to the parties 
Sometimes these arbitral tribunals are better equipped to handle such cases than the traditional adjudicatory courts because they get the experts' assistance fast. Additionally, this system of adjudication decongests the pendency of regular courts. Just now, your CEO was mentioned about Bangalore traffic. You are waiting for your destination in destination in the destiny in a litigation in the civil courts like is like uh, crossing the Bangalore traffic. So this uh, this decongests the courts also. Ultimately, the party aggrieved would be benefited out of the system. Perhaps there has been a growing demand for arbitration as a mode of resolution of dispute. Recently, our Honorable Chief Justice of India, Dr. D. Y. Chandrachud, delivered a speech at UK Supreme Court. His lordship emphasized upon the pendency in the regular courts and stressed upon the need for streamlining the practice of arbitration as an alternative. Coming to our state, in the state of Karnataka as a unique initiative, High Court of Karnataka has established Arbitration Law Centre at Bangalore in 2012, which is separately governed by the Arbitration and Conciliation Rules 2012. We have set up a dedicated centre with the directorate which helps the litigant public to have modern facilities to avail the adjudication process of arbitration with bare minimal expenses. As the President of Arbitration and Conciliation Centre Bangalore, I have been witnessing high surge of cases being filed in, the arbitration, in our arbitration centre. Since our establishment in 2012, there has been a steady rise with only 28 cases filed initially in 2013. Following COVID-19 pandemic, there was a remarkable increase of 143.9% in 2022 with 700 cases filed compared to 287 in 2021. Of these 700 cases, 402 cases have been arbitrated, that is 57.4%, leaving 298 cases pending. Since 2022, we have continued to witness a gradual increase in case filings, highlighting the expanding role of arbitration in resolving the disputes efficiently and effectively. From 2013 May to May 2024, a total number of 3,215 cases have been filed at our centre. Of these, 2,009 cases have been successfully arbitrated, while 1,206 cases remain pending. This reflects upon the scope of arbitration in the near future. You are all aware that apart from our centre, there are several private arbitration centres also, and who, which are also busy. It is high time that students of law understand and embrace the professionalism to be followed as the future advo advocates practising before the ar arbitral tribunal or as future arbitrators. This is a very good opportunity for all of you to understand the etiquettes of uh, conducting an arbitral proceeding. I congratulate uh, Arna, the Law Asia, the organizing team of uh, Law Asia, uh, sorry I forgot to mention, in, uh, in absence of Mr. Naganan, yes I am aware that uh, some proceedings are going there now in High Court where he is participating. I congratulate uh, the Law Asia International Food competition organizers for their innovative idea. A wonderful mood problem has been drafted, which I am sure that it will lead to a keen and stimulating contest between the participants. I wish the event and all its participants a grand, grand success. As uh, Mr. Rafael said, in, the, in this profession, we should know that. Uh, we are conducting the case on behalf of the parties. Here it is said, in Canada, most of you may be know in Canada, we say, Sarasave Janana, 
ವಿರಸವೇ ಮರಣ ಸಮರಸವೇ ಜೀವನ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಐ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಮೀನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಕಾಂಪಿಟೇಷನ್ ಯು ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸರಸ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮರಸ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಕಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಶ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಜೈ ಹಿಂದ್ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟಿ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಭಟ್ ಟು ರೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೋಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಆನರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಿವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ ದ ವೋಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮಯ್ಯ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಇನಾಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ರೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ತ್ ಲಾ ಏಷ್ಯಾ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಕಾಂಪಿಟೇಷನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಮೈ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ ಗ್ರಾಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಟು ಆರ್ ಚೀಫ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಮುದ್ಗಲ್ ಜಿ ಫಾರ್ ಗ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇವೆಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಹರ್ ಎಸ್ಟೀಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಟು ದ ಜುಡಿಷರಿ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೂಲಿ ಕಮೆಂಡಬಲ್ and we are deeply honored to have you with us today thank you ma'am a special thanks to you uh, mr rafael te who joined us online your dedication and contribution to field of law particularly through work with law asia are immensely appreciated thank you for your encouraging address and for being part of this momentous occasion i thank our chief executive of uh, gokula education foundation shri bs ram prasad ji and cfo of gf in absentia shri ji ramachandra ji thank you for your unwavering support and for being pillars of strength of our institution your presence here today adds great value to the event i extend my deepest gratitude to our principal professor uma mai satyanarayan for his continuous support and leadership which has been instrumental in organizing this event your guidance is always a motivation and it motivates us to strive for excellence thank you sir i would also like to acknowledge the efforts of all the faculty members staff and students of ramaya college of law who have worked tirelessly to make this event a success your dedication and hard work behind the scenes have been crucial in ensuring smooth conduct of this competition thank you very much to all the participants of the national rounds of the 19th law asia international moot competition i wish you the very best May you have a rewarding and enriching experience at this event. Your enthusiasm and commitment to the field of law is inspiring. Lastly, I thank all the guests and attendees for joining us today and making this event a memorable one. Your presence and participation is greatly valued. Thank you.